So we have a situation where the farmers are not willing to appear before this committee. All four members of the committee did in fact in the past take positions in favor of the new laws. The farmers think that the committee is biased against them and is a ploy to get them off the streets. They're also promising a big tractor rally on Republic Day, which could get really chaotic because the police won't allow that. So there could be friction and maybe even violence. How do we prevent that from happening? I want to introduce first and foremost former judge of the Supreme Court of India, Justice Deepa Gupta. Justice Gupta, welcome. I'll spend a few minutes talking to uh, Justice Gupta and then I'll go across to the firebrand spokesperson of the Bharatiya Janata Party, Sambit Patra, who will take on VM Singh who is the national convener of the All India Kisan Sanghash Coordination Committee. Justice Gupta, to you first. The Supreme Court in its interim order has stayed the implementation of the three new farm laws. Uh, critics are saying the Supreme Court's entered uncharted territory. They're also questioning the appointment of these four members, saying all four of them have taken positions in the past in the favor of these new laws. So therefore, if you've already taken a certain position favoring the laws, how can you be trusted to assuage the concerns of the farmers or to accommodate that? What do you make, sir, of what your brother judges in the current bench of the Supreme Court have done? Justice Gupta. See, the first part of your question relates to whether the Supreme Court could have passed such an order. Well, uh, normally, uh, when the constitutionality of a law is challenged, the law is normally not stayed. Sometimes, a partial stay is granted that though the law will operate, the final results will not be, the final thing will not be carried out till the court decides to act. However, in this case, the court did decide to intervene. I don't think that the court is totally powerless. The Supreme Court has very wide powers, and under Article 142, it can lay down the law for the country. Uh, sometimes, in the larger public interest also, it can make uh, certain decisions. And this appears to be one of those cases. So I agree with what a lot of people are saying, that when you grant a stay, you must give reasons. I find that the order doesn't give reasons except to say that to make the farmers and the government cut, come together and come to the dialogue table, that is why the stay is being granted. I don't think the Supreme Court should be granting stay for that purpose. If it had found that the law was prima facie illegal, then only it should have granted a stay. So I think, uh, we, you know, if this is taken as a precedent by various high courts, we would come into a stage where a lot of legislations passed by the government would be stayed by the courts without even giving adequate reasons. So there I feel that the Supreme Court either should have given more reasons while stay, passing the stay order or should have not have stayed the law itself. So, academician and uh, political theorist Pratap Banu Mehta writes, and I quote, if the function of a committee is mediation, then the court has violated the first rule of mediation. The mediators must be acceptable to all parties and appointed in consultation with them. Do you agree with that? I, I would agree with uh, Mr. Pratap Banu Mehta. Not only the, the, it's not only the first principle of mediation, it's the first principle of justice that justice should not only be done, it should appear to have been done. If you choose four people without consulting the person, parties who are going to be directly affected by that, you see, there could be, I, I don't think that in the entire country of 135 crores, we couldn't find one person, one economic or agri agricultural economic expert who would have the view in favor of the farmers. The, I'm quite sure that everybody would have used to find totally neutral persons would may have been very difficult but they could have been asked for some persons to be uh, recommended by the government some by the farmers and that way drawn up a committee which could be more balanced but though i hope and expect that the members of the committee now since they are members of a committee appointed by the supreme court of india will rise to the occasion and leave their personal predilections behind and come to a decision solely on merits, not influenced by what they have said before. I want to quote to you what economist Swaminathan Ankleshwar Iyer says, frankly, this is a question of politics. The Supreme Court has not come in because this is a judicial matter. The Supreme Court has come in because it wants to help the government find a way out. So it has asked for this particular expert committee to be formed. I don't, I won't go to the extent 
of Mr. Ayer saying that the Supreme Court has come into healthy comment. I think that's putting too much into it. But I do feel that in the last couple of years, one has seen a num large number of so-called PILs, which are supposed to be public interest litigations, are actually not public interest litigations, but police interest litigations. They are filed by persons to help the police do its job. Why should the police, if the police can't do its job, it's not the job of the court to go and help them. If the police cannot maintain law and order, it's not the job of the court to maintain it. Now we find petitioners coming in that the police is not doing this, you ask the protester to do this. I think that is something beyond which the court should not normally interfere with, uh, because if it does, it's opening a Pandora's box where you could open up many things. You, some people may like this court's interference here, but in many other issues, they will not like the court. Lastly, and before I go across to Dr. Patra, uh, what do you think should be done now? You've been very outspoken, direct, and blunt. We have a situation where the farmers are refusing to budge. There are different estimates of how many farmers they are, but they run into the thousands, and they're not moving. The 26th of January is when they are planning to march in their tractors to Delhi, which can lead to chaotic scenes. What do you think is the best and the most judicious way forward? Yeah, I'll uh, uh, not talk totally about the, it in a judicious way, in a more practical way, as a citizen of the country also. I, th I thought initially the first demand of these farmers was to ensure that MSP is, you know, there, there, there is a guaranteed MSP. Uh, the government took a view that we can't guarantee it in the Act. I don't know why that view was taken, because I don't see why one section could not have been added in the Act that whenever a private individual buys from the farmer, private individual or corporate entity buys from the farmer, it will not be at a price below the MSP. There's nothing which I don't think anything in the Constitution which prevents the government from legislating like that. That could have helped the situation at that stage. Today, I think the farmers are also uh, stuck at one level. You can't expect that the laws must be withdrawn or must be repealed. I mean, but the farmers should also realize that if MSP can be guaranteed to them during this, uh, uh, even without repealing the law, by amending it suitably, uh, you see the Punjab amendment is basically an amendment to the act which guarantees MSP. If the center was to take that into consideration, I don't see why it should. Okay. But I do feel, uh, just one minute, I do feel that this is something where the court should have been very careful to tread in because it's very dangerous territory. I appreciate your frankness and uh, your perspective. Justice Deepak Gupta, former judge of the Supreme Court of India, for taking our time and joining us. Thank you, sir. I will have to leave you now. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. Dr. Patra, you just heard from a very outspoken judge of the former Supreme Court.